Garbage collector tour. So garbage collector is a very unique point of view. This is uh, GFL, which are now picking up my garbage because I live in the west part of North York. <laughs> but the idea is uh, here. They drive very specific routes. And what I mean is like uh, we have a couple registration, like legislation and stuff like that in other, our city and other big cities. Like for example, they can't pick up garbage off the main street. Like, you know, like down here, they don't put the garbage right. Well, it depends on where you are. But the idea is that, you know, you, there's maybe another access alley or something that you pick up garbage. These guys might know the town very well, but they have a very different route than most people will take. Do you, you kind of get that idea? They're in the alleys in the back, so they're going for garbage bins, and their goal is picking up the garbage. Your goal is to avoid the garbage <laughs> as you're walking down the street. Right? So very different from the usual person. They also know where the messy parts are. They know where the bins are probably all kind of poured over. They know when to spend more time, but they're highly specialized experts. Like They do a job that nobody either can do, will do, want to do, or something like that, but they're unique in their perspective. So the garbage tour needs also somebody who's highly specialized in these type of things, or at least has that awareness, right? The bad neighbor tour. Okay, so this is the inverse, contrapositive of the money tour. This is where you focus at areas that aren't frequented, you aim for areas with high density bugs, and you're sort of driven by concern over possible areas that have issues. Next one is the museum tour. Probably not the highest one, the first tour that you're going to run, but the idea is here, let's look at uh, forgotten regression testing. Uh, it's great, mobile, life, short life cycles, so usually this kind of stuff doesn't happen, but for like legacy server, client applications, stuff like that, sometimes you, ha you inherit code from other people. You, 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 the team that built it is no longer the team that's curating it, that kind of stuff. This kind of focuses on, on unit integration testing and older, over le older legacy code that may not necessarily be tested or used. Okay, I wouldn't say this is a higher priority, but that's, it's a tour, okay? Back alley tour. So this kind of, in, in, it's a little bit like the garbage collector tour, but the idea is this one is like, you're looking under these rocks, things that are like, you know, I mean, I said the opposite of a guidebook tour, and the other one is the opposite of money tour, sort of in principle, but the idea is here. You're looking over tested areas that so people don't kind of go into very much. You might have a feature that you put in, a long time ago that not a lot of people use, well, maybe one day you want to lift up that rock and take a look at it, right? The all-nighter tour. <laughs> this is guy, I don't think you can kind of see this, but this is a guy who's climbing up uh, uh, the, the, the wall of China here in these kind of steps. I think there's a bunch of guys who do these kind of crazy tour tests. It's like triathletes on roids or something like that, but the idea is like, these are long-lived tests. And this is good. that's why it's great for like automation and stuff like that. They run the tests all night over all weekends and stuff like that. Uh, they're long running, resource intensive, and that's why they're great for automating. But the idea is they take a lot of prep and planning. That's where really the effort goes. And once you launch it, usually it kind of goes. But the idea is they, 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 you, you do this by testing experts. So you may have this as part of an automated test, but you may have an automated test that you want to put in as a sort of exploratory or manual testing. You want to use it as a tool now, not as an application, right? So. Let's go run that application on the foreground for 10 days and see if it bars, right? Or keep downloading a meg file for, you know, 400 times in a row. Does it clean up properly and that kind of stuff. This is the one where James Whitaker sort of created that, but the, the idea here is the all-nighter tour is, it's really, he's talking about the all-night part, like partying all night. He's talking about not necessarily pushing, which is kind of confusing because I, when I read this the first time, I, I didn't really understand. But he's talking about long-lived tests, things that don't, that you know how we said automated testing. They, they don't they work over time. They don't take any breaks. This is really what they're talk, What at least James is talking about. If you don't come up with a tour like this, people tend to pick short tests. Why? Because they can get more short tests done in a shorter amount of time. So you create a tour like this. You get people's thinking and insight about being pre-planned, longer running then you can fit these in your testing. Because if you start thinking about this on the last day before you ship, there's no way you're gonna finish this test. He's talking about long-lived tests that have a long tail, okay? And, and the reason he's thinking, that's why I saying it's a little more of a coincidence for his consequence. It's not the hardcore extreme user. He's using this to make sure that you understand that every so often you should run these tests that take a long time, you should do it at the start. Because guess what? By the end, you have no time to do it. So this is the supermodel tour. It has a couple different other names, but the idea is uh, this is the one is, uh, you know, like we always say this development apps, you know, sexy app sell, right, kind of thing, right? Like, like, <laughs> right? I would put this one very at the top of the list. I almost always get this from my uh, 
executive level buy-in people that are like uh, kind of ter- they have different terms for like the five seconds of bliss or something like that. Like the idea here is you're going for very visual, you're going very superficial, skin deep, right? You're going look and say, hey, you know, is it polished? You know, UI consistency. This is a case where also what do we bring in the idea of the issues, the terminology, right? You may bring up here as something as an issue. It doesn't look nice. Like people will say, well, that's not a bug, right? But the idea is this tour is finding those issues, and then once we find them, we can negotiate. Is that something that we're going to fix? Because remember, at the end of all this testing stuff is about fixing things, right? It's only good if you can fix it. If you decide not to fix it, that's also good too because at least you know it's there and, and you've made a choice, you can fix it next time or you've proactively done it. But we're going for low hanging fruit here. This can be pretty well done by almost anybody. I'd probably put this one really high at the top of the list. But the idea is you're going here. What are people gonna really think, right? Like, I mean, how many times do you go to uh, the App Store or Google Play and you look at the guys and some of the comments and they're like, it's an ugly app, or it didn't uninstall, or like you know the buttons are in the wrong place, or you know those type of things. That's what kills a five-star app. And I try to tell these people all the time. You know what? If you boil those down, a lot of those comments are superficial. But guess what? They vote. They're the people. They're the people's choice, right? So you know what? To to not account for that is very. I think is very ignorant. The idea is that those kind of comments. If you read, if you just take a couple of the competitive apps and you look and you see these type of things. A lot of times these are going to be that five seconds of bliss, right? You know, can't see all the stuff on the screen, that kind of stuff. Some of it's user feedback for sure, but the idea here is that you don't want that knee-jerk reaction to for somebody downloads your app and, and gives you like, you know, a one star. Because it's very hard to, you, it's almost impossible to get that one star out. Like you have to get so many five star votes to kind of boost your app. Another fun one. So this is the couch potato tour. This is sort of the lazy friend tour. And it's a little bit, I would say it's next cousin would be the supermodel tour. But this is the idea of you're trying to get through things as much as possible, but you leave all the settings like either blank or the default values, right? So I don't think this is the only test you should ever run, but this is, these are all about ways of thinking out of the application, right? So you might schedule a, a couch potato tour, right? You know, in this phase or whatever, or this sprint or whatever, right? The default values, that's the minimum minimum floor of your application, right? Supermodel tour doesn't get to this. This is like the next step if I had to put them together. And the last tour uh, is the uh, uh, obsessive compulsive tour. So this mimics the compulsiveness of individuals. It repeats a particular task. And this is where a lot of applications sort of kind of go haywire. Um, the, the designer in me and the UX kind of be will say the word we use is pliancy, right? The idea is that there's a button, somebody's going to press it. Well, the next assertion is that they might press it again. And guess what the assertion after that is, <laughs> right? So. A lot of things are really good the first time around, and we've seen these on demos, and you go, okay, can you click it again? We'll see what kind of happens. The idea is a pulsive concern. It, it exposes like state and cleanup issues and garbage collection and leaks and that stuff of stuff, but usually the reason that I think that this one is isolated, different from the other ones, is because to get to like the money tour and the landmark tour, we're doing everything kind of really quickly, but we never kind of really do it again. We never go back to it, and really the state to test that state really, you know, you kind of might want to do like at least full too loose, but usually that doesn't happen, right? So somebody says, yes, on the spreadsheet, it doesn't tell you how many times you tested that one feature. It usually says, check mark, feature, save button. Did you click it again? Did you, and all that kind of stuff. So this is trying to help you know, if you've kind of forgotten to do that type of test. In reality, like I said, I, I, I showed you all 13 without really giving you a definition of, of test. With pedagogically, it's kind of very difficult. I kind of showing you what it is and then tell you what it is afterwards. Give me an example and then showing you afterwards. But what I was going to try to explain now in the end, I think Deborah kind of said it, like, this is about mindset, right? You're scheduling, you want that same benefit and that creativity of an individual. I'm going to give you a kind of a initial vector that you're going to go down. And this is your thought process. And it just guides you in that direction. So you time box that think that that task, but you give that guy a person a vector, initial vector, you go on, this is the strategy you kinda wanna go with, right? In the end of the day, did you test every single thing that could be clicked a hundred times? No, right? You time box it. You say, okay, well, then afterwards you got confidence of coverage wise and say, hey, I did some of these other tests, right? But I, that's how you get that, you know, that diagram with all those little dots. You say, hi, I'm trying to get a lot of coverage.